Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history and I love history. And if you love history too, this is the channel for you. It is June the 6th, the anniversary of Operation Neptune, the Allied amphibious invasion of the beaches of Normandy, France. 73 years ago today, more than 150,000 troops, American, British, and Canadian, assaulted five beaches in the beginning of the operation to liberate Fortress Europe. But in addition to the 150,000 troops on the beaches, the Allies dropped thousands of paratroopers behind the lines, with jobs to take strategic positions, to cut off German reinforcements, and to facilitate connecting the Allied beachheads. Over 13,000 American paratroopers were dropped during D-Day, and among the first were 6,900 of the 101st Airborne Division, the Screaming Eagles. And of all the stories of heroism on D-Day, none is more interesting than the story of two medics of the 101st Airborne Division, Robert Wright and Kenneth Moore. Bob Wright and Ken Moore were both 19-year-old privates in the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. Angered by Pearl Harbor, Moore had signed up in high school, and he volunteered for the paratroops because they got extra pay, 50 bucks a month, and because the paratrooper uniform was supposed to attract girls. It sounded glamorous, he said, adding, it never occurred to me that they would make us jump out of airplanes. After training in the United States, they were moved to England in January of 1944. The island was so covered with troops and equipment that the paratroops joked that the only thing holding the island up was the barrage balloons. D-Day would be their first taste of combat. Wright and Moore were dropped behind Utah Beach in what was called Drop Zone D. The C-47 Dakotas carrying the paratroops took heavy flak, and many of the paratroops died in the planes and never even got a chance to jump. Two of the three division commanders of the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment never made it to the ground. When Moore jumped out of his plane, he was near the back, and the plane was only 300 feet off the ground. He said his parachute barely opened before he hit the ground. Much of the drop zone had been pre-registered for German fire, and so they were taking casualties from the get-go. Moore recalled being shot at the moment he hit the ground. You realize, he said, that someone is trying to kill you. Wright and Moore were both senior medics. They jumped that day with first aid kits, but no weapons. While they were medics, their medical training was limited. Moore had only gotten two weeks of medical training. Their training and their job, he said, was to stop the bleeding. They had been dropped near the tiny hamlet of Angovie au Plain. The 101st mission in the area was to cut off the main road between Cherbourg and Paris, and thus cut off the German reinforcements to the beach defenses. The tiny hamlet only had a population of about 80, and it was dominated by a small stone 12th century Romanesque church. The paratroopers dug into their positions while Wright and Moore converted the church into an aid station, and immediately casualties started coming in. To this day, you can still see blood stains on the pews of the church at Angoville Plain. The fighting was brutal. This was Bocage country, and the hedgerows offered plenty of places for snipers and machine guns to hide. The road going in front of Angoville au Plain was critical, and so the village became a centerpiece of the combat. Wright and Moore followed the rules of the Geneva Convention. They treated troops from both sides, as well as civilians, too. Two small girls from the village were wounded by mortar fragments. They treated them both. One survived. They would stabilize the wounded as best they could, and then they would risk their lives to go out into the fields and search for more wounded. Their Red Cross armbands offered them some protection from enemy fire. They used a wheelbarrow from a farm to help carry the wounded back to the church. In the heaviest fighting, the lightly armed paratroopers were pushed back and had to withdraw from the village. But Wright and Moore refused to leave the wounded, and so they stayed behind. When the Germans discovered them, they saw that they were treated wounded from both sides, and so let them be. A German officer came in and asked if he could bring in more of his wounded. They obliged. They treated men, they said, not uniforms. The only rule was that soldiers had to leave their rifles at the door. The church was often in the crossfire, sometimes from American troops who thought it was occupied by the Germans. All of the windows were shot out. They've since been replaced with stained glass representations of paratroopers. A mortar shell hit the roof and caused more injuries amongst the wounded inside. It cracked the flagstone floor of the church, and that scar can still be seen in the church today. 
A piece of the falling roof hit more on the head and made him bleed, and for that he was awarded the Purple Heart. He had treated so many seriously wounded that day that he said he was embarrassed to take it. The two worked for three days straight and never slept in that time. And in perhaps the most surprising incident of the time, after about two days, two Germans came down from the church steeple and surrendered to them. Apparently, they had been in the church the entire time and they didn't know about it. The Germans were finally pushed back for the last time on June 8th. And in those three days, Wright and Moore had saved more than 80 lives. Both were awarded silver stars for the action. There are so many stories of heroism in the invasion of the Normandy beaches. The, uh, the story of Dick Winters and the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment taking the artillery, so well described in Stephen Ambrose's book, Band of Brothers. Or the forgotten story of the African-American 320th Barrage Balloon Battalion that was described in Linda Hairview's book, Forgotten. Or the amazing story of Juan Pujols, the Spanish double agent who played such a critical role in the deceptions that tied down thousands of troops that was written in Stephen Talty's wonderful book, Agent Garbo. But the story of Wright and Moore is very interesting because in the midst of all that shooting, they never picked up a rifle. As author Tim Gray states in the book that he wrote about the two called Angels of Mercy, compassion was their ammunition. Ken Moore passed away in 2014. At his request, his ashes were dropped from an airplane. One last jump for a veteran paratrooper. And Bob Wright died in 2013. At his request, his remains are buried in a small churchyard next to a small church in Angouville-Plain, France. And you can still see that gravesite today. I'm the History Guy, and I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. And if you did enjoy it, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button that is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, or if you'd like to suggest another topic for the History Guy, feel free to write those in the comment section, and I will be happy to respond. And if you'd like five minutes more of forgotten history, all you need to do is click that subscribe button that is there on your right.